Okay, it's time for some piano. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm actually very excited today because we are going to be doing the very first song in the uh, Spring 2021 Piano Postcard Series. And this is really great because Miss Amy Hansen, composer, has partnered with me to bring her music to life in this lesson series. So thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> All right, so a couple things you can do for me before we get started. Go ahead and like and share this video. I promise you, your friends are gonna to wanna to learn this song too. Amy's music is fantastically fun, so you're gonna have a great time. All right, the next thing, if you don't mind subscribing on YouTube here, you'll be notified every time there's a new lesson to follow, especially with Miss Amy's music, okay? The next thing, make sure to subscribe to Miss Amy's uh, program, right? She's got um, her website, Piano Postcard, Dot com and you can sign up to get your physical copies of music in your house or you can also get a digital subscription okay so and if you want that digital subscription you will be able to get it right then and there and that's a really cool thing especially if you're wanting to learn these today all right wonderful <laughs> um, and then that's about it I'm gonna throw Miss Amy's logo up here in the corner there it is you see it <laughs> I'm just really happy to bring you these lessons, okay? So the next uh, and very most important thing, I guess, is the story behind the song that we're gonna be learning today. We are learning Sir William the Knight, okay? And it has a really cool story about an actual knight from England in the 1100s, which is so long ago. This knight was a brave and valiant knight who loved to play in tournaments, who worked for the queen, who was in the military. He was just a really wonderful, wonderful knight. So we are going to explore this within the amazing themes that Miss Amy has written in her song. So I'm so excited to get started. <laughs> Take a look. All right, if you have your music, go ahead and pull it out. Or if you have your digital subscription, you can pause this video and you can print it out really quick so you can join me for lesson, okay? All right, so exploring Sir William the Knight. This is the beginner version of the song. So it's very appropriate for a piano learner who's had about maybe six months to a year of piano and they've been very consistent in their practice, okay? Now, I'm going to switch to piano view so we can talk a little bit more about the music and where we are going to find ourselves on the keyboard. Um, we are in 4-4 four, four time, so four beats a measure. And we actually have a B flat in the key signature, so that's telling us that we're gonna be in F major, okay? Let's switch to piano view. All right, so here we go. So in piano view here, I see the very beginning of this piece for the right hand. It looks like it's going to be above an octave of our middle C, okay? So you're gonna start with your right hand finger one on C above middle C, and it actually has a finger three written on an E flat. So you're gonna go ahead and stay right there on your E flat, finger three, okay? It begins with a series of half notes, and then it switches to some staccato quarters. So let's see how that sounds. I'm gonna count off, and we're gonna say our note names. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. E flat, D. C, two, three, four, staccato, E flat, D, C, two, three, four, E flat, D, then C, two, three, four. Now cross over your three and put it on an A flat, A flat, G, F, two, three, four. Oh, wonderful. You've done a wonderful job on that first part. Let's try it again, okay? I'm gonna put my right hand back up there. Let's play that opening phrase, okay? Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna count off. One, two, ready, play. E flat, D, C, two, three, four. Staccato, D, C, 
two, three, four. E flat, D, C, two, three, four. Cross over, three on your A flat. G, F, two, three, four. <gasps> that was really fun. I enjoyed that opening phrase. Wasn't that cool? Yeah, it really was. Now, it gets even cooler when we get the left hand going, but I wanna actually keep going, okay? You see there's a double bar at the end of that measure, right? That's measure five, six, seven, eight. That's okay, we're gonna keep going because there's more music written there, okay? All right, so moving on, we're gonna move our hand back up to that high C position, okay? Right hand, section two, here we go. All right, so let me move my hand up. There it is. When you found your spot, you're ready to go, okay? Let's see how it goes. One, two, ready, play. E flat, D, C, two, three, four, staccato. D, C, two, three, four. E flat, D, C, two, three, four. We stay, C, E natural, F, two, three, four. Oh, wow, at the end of 16, it gets cool. Very nice, okay, so we're switching hands. Did you like that second section? I liked it. Now, did you hear how the melodic line in the right hand was related to the first opening phrases, huh? But guess what, Miss Amy made a choice. She didn't switch positions at the end of that phrase, did she? No, it was a different type of ending there. So that's actually really cool. It's fun for us as a piano learner to be able to understand why a composer makes different choices in their music. Let's play section two again, okay? I'll switch back to piano view. All right, we're having a really good time. Okay, so we are starting at the end of line two. This is measure nine. We're in that high C position with the finger three on an E flat. Okay, let's hear how it goes. One, two, ready, play. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Here's the change. E natural. Two, three, four. Oh, that was super cool. Great work. It's really coming together nicely. Now, as we continue on here in our section three or our ending, well, it's kind of like an ending, but kind of not because we actually have a duck hopper, but we'll get to that, okay? This third section here, starting at the, the second measure of line four, also known as measure 17, it's telling us that we're actually gonna move our right hand once more, okay? So we're in a high C position. We are going to now move down to a G position, okay? Let's switch to piano view so you can see how I move my hand down and you can calculate where those notes are, okay? All right, so moving my hand down all the way to the G position here, okay? Now, at the beginning, of measure 17, I see a quarter rest. Okay, so we're gonna have the first beat of silence. And then we play three Gs. And we continue with this really interesting syncopation with the quarter rests, okay? Let's give that a try. I'm gonna count off, and remember, the first beat is going to be silent. One, two, three, four, rest. G, 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 rest, A, 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 rest, G, rest, A, G, two, three, four. Now it gets a little funky here on the last line. We have a G, hold, we have an A flat, hold, we have a B flat, hold, we have a B natural with a finger four, then a C with our five, two, three, four. That was really, really crazy at the bottom, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's try that again, okay? Let's put our right hand finger one thumb on our G. 
We're starting at the beginning of measure 17, which is line four, measure two. And remember, the very first beat is a quarter rest. Okay, let's give it a try. One, two, three, four, rest. 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 One, two, three, four. 21. G, hold A flat, hold B flat, hold B natural, and then end on C. Two, three, four. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really cool. It builds at the end there. It's got that dramatic moment is building with the right hand. I really, really enjoy that sort of chromatic exploration there at the bottom, okay? Now, we've learned the left, the right hand of this song, haven't we? <laughs> but I promise you it sounds even better when we add in the left hand, okay? So, let's go back to the top of the song, okay? We're gonna explore the left hand now, okay? Now I see the bass clef, right? And I see that it has a B flat written in the key signature, okay? Now, it looks pretty low on my bass staff. So, in order to find my spot in relation to positions that we currently know, as in my beginner's classes, you know how to find low G position, right? Yes, okay, this is not low G position, but it's very close to it, okay? It's called low F position, okay? So I'm gonna switch to piano view so you can see where and how to find this position, okay? Let's do it together. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> okay, so low G position was where I'm gonna find it first because I know how to find that position. So I know I put my left hand finger one thumb on my D, right? There's my low G position. But wait, I said it's close to low G position. I didn't say it was in low G position. So let's find the low F position, okay? I know an F is just one note lower than G, so I'm just gonna fan out my fingers from a low F instead, all right? If you need to pause the video to find your spot, you can go ahead and do that, okay? Now this is a super cool left hand line, okay? It's like super staccato on the first line and even half of the second line. You know what, that's kind of like for me, it's like imagining that like that's Sir William the Knight's horse, like glup, 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 right? It's like his horse is like walking into the tournament, like all brave and excited to win, right? All right, let's see how these notes go together, okay? I'm gonna count off. One, two, ready, play. continues, right? There's that horse. Now we have a finger two on B flat. Hold up to C. Hold down to F. Two, three, four. Oh, wasn't that cool? Didn't it sound like his horse? It totally did. Like, bloom, 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 bloom. Oh, you can imagine it now. You see it. All the nights all the jousters, they've got their big, long, I don't even know what they're called, those long stick sword things. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> but then you've got like all the lords and ladies sitting and watching the tournament. And out comes Sir William the Knight in his armor and he's got his horse, very valiant. It's really cool. You can see it happening. Let's switch to piano view and play section one again, okay? All right, let's do this. Okay, here we go. Staccato, here's his Valiant horse. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Very good. Very, very proper. Measure five. Very good. Now that sounded like a real cool horse. 
Now for section two, we have to shift our left hand up, okay? Now, do you remember how to find butterfly middle C position? Right, remember we had our butterfly, Miss Petunia, she helped us find our middle C position. Now for the left hand, you're gonna put that left hand thumb on your middle C, okay? Now, since we have B flats in this song, we're gonna put that finger two on that B flat, okay? And I forgot to mention earlier, if you come across any Bs in this song, let me switch here and tell you, any Bs in this song, remember to put a flat sign in front of them, okay? That's what that key signature at the very beginning is telling us. So take your pencil and put a little flat sign in front of every B, okay? Now, if you have a B that has a natural sign in front of it, then that's telling you to just play a regular B, okay? All right, let's switch back to piano view. We're gonna play section two, left hand. See how it goes. Okay, I'm so excited. So the last measure of line two, we're starting in butterfly middle C position for the left hand. Our first note is a middle C, okay? Here we go. One, two, ready, play. C, hold B flat, hold down to F. Two, three, four. C, hold B flat, hold down to F. Two, three, and four. Back to C. Hold, B flat, hold down to F, two, three, four. Now we have an extra little one here, A flat, down to G, then F, two, three, and four. I like that little extra A flat they put in there. It makes it sound really cool. Miss Amy made some great choices here. <laughs> okay, let's try section two again, okay? Butterfly middle C position for that left hand. We have moved, right? We're gonna start with that middle C again, okay? Here we go. End uh, of line two, this is measure nine, okay? Let me count them. One, two, ready, play. C, hold B flat, hold down to F, two, three, and four. I like that pattern. Finger three, A flat, G down to F, two, three, four. Bravo, wow, section two sounds really good. I can't wait to play this hands together. It's so awesome. Okay, so now we're moving into section three, okay? Line four, the measure 17, you will see that we are beginning with whole note harmonic third, okay? I know it's a third because it kind of looks like the beginnings of a little snowman, right? Yeah, space notes. I see them. But our position has changed again. Miss Amy has given us a little indication that we need to move. We have a finger one and a finger three. And it looks like that's going to be on a G and an E. So if I do that, if I move down there, one and three on G and E, that's putting me in C position. <gasps> we know C position! Thanks, Miss Amy. All right, so C position. This is where we're gonna be here, okay? Now let's switch back to piano view and I'll show you how to shift and change there and then keep playing section three, okay? You can do this. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we just finished butterfly middle C position, right? So we're here. But guess what? We gotta shift down to C position now. So I'm gonna move my hand down and put my thumb on G, my three on E, okay? Now starting at measure 17, I'm going to count off, okay? Let's see how it goes. One, two, ready, play. E and G, harmonic two, three, four. Now we have an F and A, and move your thumb up to an A, one and two. One, two, three, four, back down to E and G, two, up to F and A, Hold back to E and G, two, three, four. Now measure 21, we have G, hold down to F, hold down to E, hold down to D, and then to C, two, three, and four. Very nice, look at that. The first
first five times in C position. That's pretty good. Measures 21 to the end. G, F, E, D, C. Very good. I already feel like a valiant knight myself. I should, I should go jousting or something. Cool like that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I don't want to hurt my fingers. That's why I teach piano, right? I don't want to go jousting. <laughs> but yes, yeah, some really interesting stuff going on there, okay? I really enjoy this. Now, before we attempt in hands together, let's have a chat, okay? We need to talk about two, actually three things, okay? We need to talk about the dynamics, okay? Ooh, you know all about dynamics. We start with a nice mezzo forte at the beginning, and then towards the end of section one, we have a nice crescendo to a forte going into section two. Really, really comes together there, okay? Nice strong forte throughout, moving, moving through the whole song, and then at the end, we go back to the beginning. We have a da capo al fine, right? Yeah, so with those dynamics, it, it's a consistent forte or a mezzo forte throughout. I think that's a really great choice because if you think about a tournament, you know, with horses and knights and giant swords and all this stuff, it's loud, right? It's like, it's like the equivalent of like being in a stadium for sports right now, right? What if it's like March Madness for, for the knights, right? They've got their things and it's loud and exciting and the crowd goes wild. It's got to be forte. It makes total sense. <laughs> so we know about our dynamics. I mentioned also the da capo, right? So at the end of playing all of the music, all of the lines, the da capo is kind of like that bouncy ball, right? We talk about repeat signs and bouncy balls all the time in my studio. So it's boing, it's boinging you back to the beginning, okay? And you're gonna play until you see the word fine, right? Yeah, fine means end in Italian. Da capo means the cap or the top. You know, sometimes when you hear a, comp um, a conductor say, from the top, from the top. That's what he's talking about, da capo, right? <laughs> it makes sense, yeah. So that way you know that the end of the whole song is actually at the end of section one. You see the word fine? I see it. <laughs> All right. So now that we've done that, we've also need to, we have to talk about the styling, right? The musicality, the phrasing in this song, right? So we've broken it down into three sections, right? Section one is like that opening theme, right? We have a long, a nice crescendo at the end of section one. The middle section, that could be like the organization, right? The organization of the knights into their respective sides and colors and things like that, right? And then at the end of section three, from measures 21 all the way to the, uh, I guess it's measure 23, the end of the page, that's like an expansion, right? It's an expansion musically back into the theme, right? Because we have to do the da capo. Is this making sense? <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited? Yes. Well, now that we've talked a whole lot about the music, let's play the whole song now, okay? I'm so excited. I'm gonna switch to piano view so you can hear the whole thing, okay? Here we go. All right, this is Sir William the Knight by Miss Amy Hansen. <laughs> All right. Let's find our spot first. So my left hand is gonna be in my low F position. My right hand is gonna be on a high C position. Starting with that finger three on an E flat and my left hand pinky staccato on my low F. Okay, let's give it a try. One, two, ready.
da capo. Now, did you have fun? I had a blast. Like, that was so much fun. Miss Amy makes amazing music, and I'm so happy I get to bring these to you and teach you these songs. Her music needs to be heard, doesn't it? She's very good at what she does. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you, if you enjoyed that, if you enjoyed this lesson, um, make sure to subscribe, not only to me, but to Miss Amy, right? I was on this side. There's her logo. Can you see it? Oh, there it is. Pianopostcard.com, okay? Miss Amy has the music. If you need your music for these lesson series, you need to order it. Subscribe to pianopostcard.com, okay? Get the digital subscription, all right? If you want a little discount on that digital subscription, make sure to type in Izzy for the discount code for the digital student subscriptions, okay? very exciting awesome so once um, you're done with that um, also remember I I am on patreon right so this is what I do I teach miss Amy writes right so I teach here on YouTube but I rely on the generosity of my students and families across the world um, since I'm a donation-based studio um, if you visit patreon.com slash Izzy Chia you can find a tier that works for you, okay? I have different tiers from $5 a month all the way up to $90 a month, um, giving you, you know, everything that I do here, right? I don't, I don't really believe in financial barriers to high quality education, especially in piano instruction, because I know that it can be very expensive. So I do my best to offer my absolute best here on YouTube to you. But if you are able to afford just a small donation, um, I greatly appreciate that because it helps keep it free for other people. Okay? Thanks so much for considering that. <laughs> and I guess my final note here is thank you for watching. Okay? This is the first of many lessons I will be doing in the Piano Postcard series. Okay? I'm teaching all the music from every season. Okay? This season, Spring 2021, is the very first and there are two songs um, at each level. There's two beginner songs and two intermediate songs, okay? In a couple weeks, I will be posting the beginner version of the second song in this series, okay? So keep your eyes peeled and don't forget to subscribe, okay? I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.